Welcome back to the internet and today I'm going to show you how you can get call summaries like this. Check this out. So it says inbound call recorded and then it'll actually post a summary directly to the notes so you don't have to go back and listen to phone calls and forget what you said and have no idea who that person is that you're calling. And then you hang up and then you have to read or listen to the phone call to figure out who it is. So anyways, I'm going to show you how you can fix that. And what I actually did to solve this problem for myself is to basically create an app using the high level API. So this is what it looks like. Um, essentially I have a really nice uh, series of images, which I, I can't close. There we go. There was an X button. Um, but here's this beautiful dashboard that I created and it kind of explains a little bit about the permissions, why it needs certain permissions, how you can si set it up. And in case you're wondering, it is free. It's basically you bring your own open AI key. So that way I'm not getting charged hundreds of dollars a day and you're going to be getting charged a few dollars a month. Um, so I can actually afford to give it away for free. So anyways, now that that's explained, let's just go through installing it. So yeah, actually I'm just going to uninstall it from all of my locations at the moment. And then when I refresh the page, it'll have an install button and we can go ahead and show you how that works. So I'm going to hit install. And by the way, you can't actually find this in the app marketplace because it's in review right now. Um, basically high levels looking at it to make sure they want it on their app store. And so what the only way to download it is I'll put a link in the description. You have to be signed in to app.gohighlevel.com into your like agency owner account. And then when you click on that link, it should bring you to this exact page. Um, so anyways, I'm going to hit install. I'll just do all locations and then allow. And that's going to open up a new tab. So you, you want to make sure not to close this page because once everything is done loading, it's going to redirect you to your signed in page. So it says welcome name, which is really cool. I'm really proud of that. Um, and then there's a couple steps and this video breaks down really quickly. It's two minutes. I mean, you can speed it up, but it just shows you how to actually like generate an API key and make sure you have everything enabled so that the call recordings actually work. Um, and then literally all you do is you're going to enter in your API key. So let's just go, basically what you need to do is have an open AI API key. Um, and what that requires is that you actually set up a uh, billing. So I have money added to my account. Basically they make you put in $5 and then when it goes to $0, it'll add $10. Um, but you're not going to use much credits at all. So what you do, you add a card and I now have two accounts with a card because I did it for the demo, but then you go back to the dashboard, API keys, and then you can just create an API key. So I have this one, this Stellar. I'll just delete it and then create a new one for Stellar again. And then you just leave everything to vault, default um, and then hit create. And that'll, that'll show you the key. I believe you can only copy it once, so you just want to make sure that it goes through when everything's uh, before you like press done. And then you paste it in and hit submit. And basically what that does on the back end, I'll show you how the back end and how it works. Um, but essentially all it does is it calls the API with something like a free kind of uh, system just to make sure that the token is working. And then uh, once that works, then I return this message so that you know you're good to go. So basically everything is done from that point on. I mean, you can close this tab. Of course, there's an email help down there. Um, but you're, you're essentially good to go. And so from this point, I'm just going to show you kind of how this app works um, just so you can get an idea. So this app is using NAN, which is kind of like Make or Zapier. I'm sure you've heard of those. And I'll just walk you through this logic just because I know if you're installing something on your agency account, you, you want to make sure it's all legit. Um, so essentially, the first thing that we have is an install. So that loading screen that we saw that said don't close this page, all that's doing is there's a code when you land on that page in the URL. And what we're doing is we have to take that code um, from the URL, send it over to this workflow, and then that's going to send, we, and then we send that code to high level and we're like, look, this location or this agency just installed our app. Here's the code they gave us and can we please get our access tokens. So what that does is it gives us an access token which we can use to push things to the API, in this case a note whenever a call is finished. So once we do that, there's a bunch of logic because with Superbase as the back end, we have to like do things with users to make sure there's an email and get all this stuff set up. It was kind of a pain in the ass. Um,
But essentially all we do is after that's done, I'm notifying myself and then we run the install locations. So when, when that page is done, um, when that, that page is done loading and you land on the page with your name, that's like your company has been installed and validated. But then after the location is, um, or after you land on that page, then all the locations are installed in the background. Okay. So you'll see like, uh, basically we're just calling over and over. We're like exchanging the company access token for the location access token. And that's, what's going to allow us to go in and post the note. Um, and then this is the workflow that validates the open AI key. So we just do like get API key basically means that when you press submit on that, it sends that key over to this address. And then here's the actual call. So we're doing um, a git call to openaicom slash view on slash models. And that just returns a list of the available models. So we don't have to like use any actual compute here. We're literally just pinging it. And then we just submit uh, the open AI key to make sure that it's legit. And um, this should not be sensitive. Yeah, this is, yeah. So I'll just, just to make sure this is my previous open AI key that I just deleted. So don't try to uh, dox me, please. Um, and then the last thing is on this page, I'll open it back up. Um, there is a little button. So essentially, obviously I want to make money with this. Obviously I want to be able to charge for something in the future. And I have a couple ideas for that. Firstly, if you're on this page, you'll see that there's a little thing here that says, if you'd prefer to not have to deal with the open AI keys, you can pay as you go. So once you click on this, then it just loads up a page which says, look, we haven't actually implemented that yet. Uh, or it should load up a page either way. Um, something may have broken, but essentially it would just say like, yeah, all right. Um, we haven't done it yet, but we've logged your request. So that's what this workflow is doing is it's basically sending that to my logs and my database and then also sending myself a text. So I know that someone has, has been interested in it. Um, most likely that will not be the case. Now these, are triggered by time. So this one is every 20 hours. This is for the locations. This one is for the companies every 19 hours. Essentially with high level with their API, every time you request access tokens um, so that you can send notes to the contacts, you have to refresh them every 24 hours. And so when, when you get the API token, they also give you this thing called a refresh token. So you, so every 24 hours or less than 24 hours, you have to go to high level. You have to be, all right, here's a refresh token. Can I please get a new token? And then they give you one. So we're storing that. And then, yeah, this is the actual workflow for how call summaries are generated. So first of all, if there's an uninstall, I'm actually uninstalling like the company, the locations, marking it so that you don't get any um, errors. And then this is what happens for inbound and outbound messages. So they're categorized differently, but I'll kind of show you how that works. So. If it is a phone call, then we're going through this path. If it's not a phone call, then we're just saving that message. And the reason why is not to be creepy, but when I was running my agency, you always run into this problem where you don't know if your clients are actually calling their leads. And if they're not calling their leads, they're not going to get results. They're never going to get results if they're not like actually talking to people, actually having good conversations and closing deals. And it's really hard to check that. You can go into high level, you can click on reporting, but if you have 10 clients, I mean, that in itself might take half an hour and it's just too easy to put off. You're gonna put it off. And so my idea with this is to basically send like a daily email where it's like, look, here's your clients, here's the ones that most is most risk at, at risk of churn because he hasn't called any of, lead, if, of their leads. Um, and so by knowing like how many messages are going out, how many calls are happening, what's the duration, what's the summary, you can really well, you can do a really good job of predicting churn and figuring out like who's actually, who's actually making money and who's not. So that's the big idea behind Stellar. And that's why call summaries is almost like a Trojan horse. It's like, I'm going to get you by providing a bunch of value. And then down the line, you're going to realize that this feature is so amazing and it's not that good because I can't categorize by user and I can't do a lot of things because I, I only have certain permissions, but in the future, I'll come out with a new app that I can actually, hopefully you'll be happy to pay for. Um, so then if I can click through this, uh, with the call summary, essentially what we do is as soon as we receive that call, well, first we pull the API key 
so that we have the key to go into high level. And the, the reason, if you're wondering, I'm not clicking into all of this stuff is because these tokens can be sensitive. They're not anymore because this is from a couple of days ago. This is, and I guess it's also ellipse. Um, but I just don't want to like this accidentally dox myself, you know? But essentially what we're doing is we're pulling out the location and then we're giving that authorization token to high level and we're creating a new note um, that's gonna actually be used to hold the summary. So if you can see, this is what it looks like. It says outbound call recorded, summarization in progress. So basically as soon as you finish a call, within half a second or, or 0.1 of a second, you should get a note in there that says summarization in progress. And the reason we do it there is that there's gonna be a lot of different kind of API calls that are gonna take longer than you might wanna wait. So you might be, is this working, is it not working? So anyways, what we do is we, after we create the note, then we go up to the company level and we find the API key that you submitted. And then we use that to, well, okay, for, this is, this, this gets kind of complicated, but first of all, we have to do a get request to the URL with the call recording. So we get that and then it returns like a binary file of that actual phone call. And then what we do is we have this gigantic script that I do not, I cannot even pretend to understand. Um, AI wrote it for me, but essentially what it does is it loads that file. The hardest part is loading that file in the right kind of format. Um, and then it makes an open a, a call to the open AI API, which transcribes the phone call. Now, if, if this seems like overly complicated, it's cause it is, I mean, if you use, wait, let me see. So th this is the API docs for open AI. And if we take a look at this kind of example request, we'll see that they request something called a file, which is, it looks like a path, but it's, it's actually a file. Somehow it's not supposed to be a string. It's supposed to be interpreted as an actual file and sent over HTTP. Now, the cool thing is if you use Deepgram, which is what I used before, but no one's really heard of Deepgram um, unless they're a developer. So they're going to be much more likely to actually want to use it. That's why I use OpenAI. But with Deepgram, you literally send a URL. So this would be like 10 times easier if I didn't have to fuck around with all of the different like file formats and all that stuff. Um, so essentially what that does is it creates a transcription of the audio and then we do another uh, API call to summarize that call and create like a nice formatted kind of view of the, uh, of the note. And then what you do is I mean, essentially, if the summarization is correct, is like if it actually works, then we're just gonna post a call summary. And this is the one I was showing in the beginning, outbound call recorded, and then it, it breaks it down kind of line by line. This was like a 30 second phone call, so of course it's super short, but it just updates that note we created earlier to have this, so you're not just a bunch of random notes sitting around. And then if that doesn't work, we're posting an error. Um, essentially, it's a problem with the API key, so we're gonna alert you of that. Um, and yeah, and then finally, at the end, then we're just saving the calls. This was a little bit of debugging I was doing, but um, yeah, I mean, we're essentially saving that data so that you can view it and you can tell like how many calls are being made. And yeah, I mean, that is essentially the entire system. Um, this took me about three days to build out using um, NAN and yeah, I don't really have anything to add. Make sure you click the link in the description if you want to check it out and just kind of read through, um, this app page to, you know, see what, like, I actually tried to break down the permissions because I know that's kind of, um, like you need to trust, you need to trust what it's actually for. And then I kind of explained why it's free. What's the whole motive behind it. It's nothing I haven't said in this video but then there's some other documentation you can find. Like I have a, uh, a Notion page I just turned into a website for this. I mean, cause they require a website, but it just breaks down the exact same stuff. And yeah, this should be available on the App Store ASAP as possible. Um, I provided everything they needed and um, that's essentially all there is to it. So anyways, let me know you, you have the, uh, the support email right here. Just shoot me an email if you have any questions or any problems or anything like that, and I'm happy to help out.